on the north side of Flint, which is the, the, the largest part of the city, there are no grocery stores. So they call it a food desert, a job desert, and now a water desert. This is my home. As you can see, when you come in, you can see tons of water. This is the water that we use to do everything with. I have lived in Flint, Michigan since I was seven. So that makes 23 years with the exception of when I went to prison. For my safety and the safety of my family, I just, I just turned off all the water to all our faucets. So now when you come to my house and you cut on water, nothing comes out. Because I don't want the mistake of my daughter coming and turn on water and, and using water that's contaminated and poisoned. This water crisis started a little over two years ago. My daughter is almost two. Um, so she was born into this water crisis. This is what my daughter and my wife used to take baths in. So we heat up water in this big pot over here uh, that's on the stove. We heat up water in there and we put water in here. And this is where they bathe at, um, unfortunately. Now when I tell my daughter it's time to take a bath, she runs to the tote instead of to the bathroom. I mean, it really hurts, you know, for my daughter to think this is what taking a bath is like. This is what, this is her perception of taking a bath. Since she's been born, she's been in the hospital three major times. Uh, she spent every Christmas of her life in the hospital. You know, as I slept in the hospital on the floor, watching my daughter can't leave from five feet from her bed because she's hooked up to all these different machines. You know, it, it as a father, it, it it almost destroys you, you know, and it and it pushes you to make to want to be able to help make the situation go away. All right, welcome everybody again to George Chapman Apple Church. When the government is not there to help, and when the government is not doing what we pay them to do, then we have to do what God is paying us to do. To go to some of the areas where the National Guard says it's too dangerous to go. And to be able to see these are nice people. These are people who are grateful or who are in a position to where they can't help themselves. That lady is legally blind. Okay. I've been a part of the streets. I've been a part of the, the problem. Most people would have never saw me as a leader. I'm still reminded of that, of that uh, prison guard as I was walking out the door telling me that you would be back. You know, and that's what, what most of the world think once you get into the system, that you'll be back. You'll continue to do what you've done all your life, which is it's, it's easy to do because the world is not going to give you a second chance. And it's unfortunate, but it's also giving me a new look at how America is going to start treating people. It's going to be like almost, a, it's not a third world country, it's almost like every man for itself.